Okay, hi there, welcome to an applied micro video. Here's a little mini case study on the economics of capacity utilization for a business and fixed costs. We're going to take a look for a few minutes at Premier Inn, uh, owned by Whitbread, which actually has just announced plans to cut thousands of jobs because they're selling far fewer hotel rooms and obviously less food as a result of the coronavirus pandemic. I think it's a good case study to use in lessons to show the economic importance of spare capacity for a firm's operating costs. So what do we mean by capacity utilisation? Well, the word capacity is a measure of, if you like, operational capacity or capability for a business. It's a, a dynamic concept. It changes over time as a result of investment. And basically, capacity measures how much output a business can supply over a given period. You might have a number of customers per day in, in a restaurant, for example, or the capacity of units from a production line in a manufacturing plant. Capacity utilisation is closely linked to the concept of productive efficiency, and it measures the percentage or proportion of a firm's total capacity, which actually gets used, used up, if you like, over a given time period. So we take the actual output, divide by the total capacity, multiply by 100 to get a percentage capacity, capacity utilisation. Now, as a rule, uh, a, a fall in capacity utilisation will lead to an increase in a firm's unit costs, average costs, particularly because many businesses have high level of fixed costs in the short run. So let's take a quick mini example to illustrate the point. Premier Inn has the stated ambition to be the world's best budget hotel. Here's a quick question for you. What's the average room rate you might be charged if you stay on average in a Premier Inn hotel in the UK? Lots of factors to think about here. Time of day, week, location. But what's the average room rate in the UK for a Premier Inn hotel? Just press the pause button if you want to have a go. The correct answer is... £62 in the UK. Again, higher in London perhaps and higher in tourist spots. Lower at weekends, typically on a Sunday night, but the average is £62. Now, Premier Inn is owned by the UK multinational business Whitbread, obviously focused on the hospitality sector. Uh, here's the number of Premier Inn hotels in the UK. Uh, although the UK is the biggest market, they've also tried to expand into international markets, including uh, a recent takeover in Germany. The brand has over 80,000 hotel rooms worldwide uh, and far higher in the UK, for example, than their leading competitors, which are Travelodge and I think Holiday Inn. Now, crucially, that this is a business which has grown rapidly. Lots of investment in the business now has £2 billion of revenue each year. And you can see here that their market share in the UK, if you take the market share by percentage of total rooms in the UK in the hotel sector is now in double figures, now 11, 11%. Our focus in this video is spare capacity, the idea of capacity, capacity utilisation. And in the hotel sector, occupancy rates is a key measure of capacity utilisation for a hotel. And that's basically measuring what percentage of their available rooms are filled with customers on any given day. Now, this chart is really interesting. It shows the occupancy rate for Whitbread's Premier Inn brand, uh, and it peaked at 81.3% uh, in 2014, 2015, and then there's been a gradual decline, falling to 76.3% in 2019, 2020. Not fundamental, because the business has been growing, have been building lots of new hotels, and uh, you know, you'd expect, in a sense, that to fall, because the demand may not necessarily rise quickly in line with the number of new hotels being built. But notice 2020-21 left blank. We're not yet at the end of the year, but the, the latest data suggests that in the wake of the pandemic, occupancy rates have fallen steeply for Premier Inn, despite the fall in VAT from 20% to 5% and, and the gradual relaxation of lockdown. Whitbread has just made an important announcement. They've said that 91% of the hotels now open by the end of August, but the occupancy rate was just 51% in August, a steep decline in occupancy rate. In other words, an increase 
in spare capacity in the business, so a decrease in capacity utilization. Big news. Now, why does this matter? Well, here's the, here's the data. It could be as low as 50%. Why does this matter? It matters because of the impact on a firm's costs per unit. And in particular, let's consider what a rise in spare capacity or a fall in capacity utilization might have on a firm's average fixed costs. Now, average fixed cost or AFC is the fixed cost per unit of production. And we just take the total fixed cost, the total overheads, uh, TFC and divide by the level of output in a given time period. TFC over Q gives the fixed cost per unit. Little numerical example, assume a business has fixed costs of five million pounds. Those costs don't change with output. So if we divide, let's say, output is 200,000 units. If we divide five million by 200,000, we get a fixed cost per unit of 25 pounds. But of course, if output goes down, AKA number of people using hotel rooms goes down or the number of customers in the restaurant falls, many of those fixed costs remain the same. And therefore, if output is lower, the fixed cost per unit goes up. Put a little number in here. That should be 125 units, 1,000 units, sorry. If output is 125 units, 25,000 units, divide 5 million by 125, you get 40 pounds. A fall in output with fixed costs remaining the same leads to an increase in average fixed cost. And that's going to put a lot of pressure on the profitability of a business. Uh, particularly in today's tough economic climate, it might be very hard for Premier Inn to make any increase in room rates above £62, for example, because demand is so weak. So it's a good example of, of, uh, of a business whose fixed costs are under pressure because of a fall in demand. What Premier Inn done, actually, they've delayed a lot of their investment. So apart from maybe recently completed hotels, they've cut back on room refurbishment plans in the pipeline. They've cut a lot of other fixed costs, things like staff recruitment, training, marketing spend, all that kind of stuff. They put over 25,000 of their employees on temporary furlough. Uh, and they've also really cut back on other forms of capital spending. So Premier Inn is clearly trying to reduce their overheads to negate the fall in, in demand. It's also worth saying, I think that Premier Inn uh, made many rooms, I think nearly 40 hotels available to NHS staff. Uh, and they also donated tons of food to charities um, uh, when, their, when their restaurants close. So they have a quite a strong um, social corporate, social responsibility aspect. But crucially, um, we find that when capacity utilization goes down, fixed cost per units go up. And this is a key important economic relationship to be aware of. Many, many businesses are suffering from this. They have overheads, their output, their sales have gone down. As a result, their unit costs have gone up and that puts their profits under pressure. Okay, thank you very much indeed.